Welcome back. I'm Jeff Frick. You're in the Cube. We're at the ServiceNow Knowledge Event in Las Vegas, the beautiful Aria Hotel. And our next guest is uh, the winners of the hackathon. So, Fruition Partners sponsored a hackathon. We went in, we got a little uh, footage while it was going on. We'll have that up shortly. But I have here the winners. So, we have Robert Fedoruk, is that it? Fedoruk. Fedoruk, yep. excuse me, from Hyatt Hotels. And also uh, Adam Mason from Loyola Marymount, which is kind of funny. So you guys are from different companies, different industries. Uh, you don't work in the same state, you in the same state even? No, he's no. in Chicago, I'm in LA. So how did you end up working together on this hackathon? How did that kind of zenith of the idea come together? Honestly, it was Twitter. It was there was, Twitter. There was mm -hmm. a bunch of us. We had seven people on our team, and uh, none of us were going to really do the hackathon individually. And then a couple of us got talking, and then we talked to some other people on Twitter. And then we started having Google Hangouts, and all of a sudden we had a team ready to go, and we were kicking around ideas for a couple of weeks before the hackathon started. Okay, excellent. So you came down. So what was what was kind of the baseline uh, rules or framework of the hackathon that they gave you? So basically, they gave you a clean instance on the latest release. It was on Calgary. Okay. And you could build anything you want, and you could. You, they actually said you could access outside things, but what you couldn't do is you couldn't bring your own code in and your own update sets pre-configured and come in and load it. So you did have to build it on the fly. See, so how big was your team? Seven people. Yeah. Seven people, so you had, and was everybody from different companies, all seven? Yep. yep, there's one guy that works with me at Loyola Marymount. Okay. And then uh, we had a couple people that are consultants, and okay. then someone from Hyatt, and um, let's see, Michael. Mike uh, from Rowan. Yep. Yeah, uh, which is a utility company down in Texas, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yep. Yep. So it really speaks to kind of the horizontal nature of all of your guys' jobs and, and what you're doing and problems you're mm -hmm. trying to solve. So how baked was the idea? Because uh, what it started at like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock yesterday. How baked was the idea when you entered the room? We probably could have delivered the pitch like before we even got into yeah. the room. Oh, really? It, it, once we had the pitch, because I mean, if you looked at the previous innovations of the year, there was like a couple still images and then an idea. Okay. And so we wanted to have that really just solidified before we came in and started coding. And okay. Then, uh, so what was it? So what what would you want to build? So what we kicked around a lot of ideas. We actually had a lot of good ones that we just put on the, on the shelf. And Robert actually came up with the one that we went with, which was to take kicks the concept of Kickstarter. So crowdsourcing and crowdfunding a project, okay. and put that internally within ServiceNow, so a company could utilize it to prioritize IT projects. Yeah. Oh, all right. And just incubate them before they even became live, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of times all these decisions are kind of made in a black box that nobody okay. has any insight into, and it's always just single projects at a time. I have a single project; it cost me fifty thousand dollars. I'm going to check my budget. Does that have it in it? I'm going to check my boss's budget. Does that have it in it? And if not, the project goes away. Right? If it's not that way, then it's a couple of guys in a black box making the decision for you. And we thought, what if, what if people themselves in the company could say, I have an idea, and then just by the force of the goodness of the idea, right. people would come along and collaborate to it. I can't give you money, and but get, I can- And get money, and right. get money too. Yeah, we, yeah. Can, we so can help you fund it, we can help you staff it. Internal kickstarting yeah. to fund a, an idea that's yeah. applicable across a lot of things. Right. So we that's wanted to great. capture the essence of whatever was between the asking and the PMO, so we, we'd incubate the project up to the point until we had all the funding and staff, and then we'd drop it off in the PMO's lap with all the resourcing taken care of. Okay, so how much of the process was kind of mapping it out, and then how much of the process was coding? Because you guys went till, I think mid, was midnight a hard, a hard stop that they put in? Yeah, we, we ran right, right up to when the judges were coming around. We were okay. making little tweaks. There's always more stuff that you can do, well, but. Sure. You know, you want to get a good functional wireframe in there so that you can at least show what you're doing and present the concept and it makes sense. That's so. great. Yeah. We had a couple guys that went through and just did a whole lot of requirements modeling yep. beforehand. So there was, a, there was a good model even before we got there. Okay. And it was just a matter of code execution. And then tell us a little bit about the judging process. How did, because how many teams were there in there? There's, There's at least 20 teams that's that were in there. That's 20 teams. And then people from ServiceNow came around and Honestly, there was about 20 people in the ServiceNow group, so I couldn't tell you everybody that was a judge, but the judges went around and they were taking notes and they did a deep dive into each of the different hackathon okay. projects, and then they picked out the final four people. Okay. Then we got to go uh, down to the expo hall the next day, and we got to like hawk our wares in front of people and try to get them to vote for us. Awesome. Yeah. So what were the other app, what were the other top four? What, what were those apps? What did they do? So there was Casino Now, which was a full-scale blackjack implementation that had funding and everything. 
uh, someone made a Pictionary app, which was really cool, and used, they were actually using a tablet that they could draw into it. And then uh, the, the other team made basically an open table version okay. for a reservation system. So, so were those sound like more fun though than like real business applications. Was they were, I mean, yeah. Just fun to see cool what they fun. could come up with in terms of with the platform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you use the new app creator or did you go old school and? Definitely use the app creator. You definitely use the app creator. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what was the biggest challenge you think of the whole process? Um, I think one of the main challenges was just how do you, how do you, um, how do you how do you figure out who does what when you have seven people? And IT is such a meritocracy that right. you know you kind of have to wait for the for the for the most skilled person to kind of um, rise to the top. But in the short amount of time, we just didn't we just didn't know who the alpha was on the team, and so right. it was how do we collaborate without a little bit of leadership? And uh, but it worked out really well. You know, it just everybody seemed to kind of naturally find the stuff they wanted to work on, and coincidentally, that was exactly what we needed done. Yeah. And they kept you well caffeinated and well sugared. And I think uh, we, I think we killed all the Red Bulls that they had. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I heard there was some entertainment that was supposed to come in late night. Did you yes. some uh, Vegas entertainment? The whole time there 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 were entertainment interludes. Entertainment interludes, awesome. Yeah. So now what happens with this app that you guys have built? You know, is it how close is it to being real? And are you going to take it back to your to your uh, organization? It's, it needs some polish, but uh, it's workable. You know. Yeah, uh, it's we, functional. It, can work. It just it just needs a little bit of polish, and you know I I imagine we would at least those of us on the team will be at least doing the good college try to get it into our organizations. Mm -hmm. too. And what's it called? To give it a name? We call kick it, it now. Kick it now. Kick it now. Awesome. That's a great story. And what'd you win? You had to win something. We got an Apple TV, Apple, Apple and we got to go up on the big stage and get a handshake. Just seven, seven great. Apple TV. Yeah. Glory, fortune nice. and glory. Is yes. Nice. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks for coming by the cube and sharing appreciate the story. It. Yeah, but I think it's it. an innovative. Uh, Example using you know what's really popular right now in the music business, and now it's moving into startups. This whole crowd sourcing and crowdfunding mm -hmm. to raise money, and taking that into IT to actually find bits and pieces of budget and or you said other resources mm -hmm. that people contribute to a common goal. And again, I think it's a it's a it's a reinforcement of a theme we hear over and over at this show, which is because I have this tool, you know, my my thought process is now changing much more business centric. How can I help the business? How can I be innovative? How can I not just be an order fulfiller and, mm -hmm. and run around and have to fix problems all the time? Because I can get all, automate a lot of that stuff and kind of get a, think about a bigger things. And then of course, living in 2013, the fact you guys are collaborating across industries, across geographies, and coming together to, to create something real, uh, it's pretty exciting. So thanks again for coming on theCUBE. Again, this is theCUBE. We're at Knowledge, ServiceNow's user group and industry conference. We'll be right back in a minute with our next guest, so stay right with us.